Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Mr. Jack Extension. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. It's no secret that I love the Mr. Jack series. It's done by, co-designed by my favorite game designer, Bruno Cathala, uh, also Ludovic Malblanc, who doesn't get enough credit, actually did this as well. Uh, and I'm going over the Mr. Jack's extension. Now this, the one I'm going over here is the latest one. It's for the sort of the newer edition of Mr. Jack, uh, which is I think was like the 10th anniversary edition. This extension is the new version with the new artwork that's compatible with the newest version. So let me show you what this expansion brings. I'll see you on the other side. Mr. Jack extension comes with six new characters that you can mix in with the original Mr. Jack. Now I have the version that is, uh, you know, compatible with the newer edition of Mr. Jack, the 10th anniversary sort of edition. Uh, there was one with the older edition that went with the older version of Mr. Jack, but this is the newest version. Now to ensure that the game actually works, the four main characters are always used, and these are the ones that move the lights, move the manhole covers, move the cop barriers, and gain information about who Jack is. These are always used regardless of if you're using the expansion or not. But the other four ones you use are going to be set up in different ways. You can just randomly place them, uh, the new ones that you're using, in the spots that the other four characters would normally be. Or you can do a drafting procedure where you're drafting the characters that aren't these four main ones. So you have all six of the new ones plus the four other ones from the base game. You take all those and you can go through a drafting procedure, picking not only the ones that are in the game, but also where those are. So if you're super experienced in the game and both of you are, there's a lot of strategy in the setup. I actually prefer, since I'm usually playing with newer players, is to either randomly pick the new characters or pick all the newer characters because that's more interesting to me and I just randomly place them in the spots where the other four outside characters start. Now let's talk about what these characters do. This one, after moving one to three, all characters that are near it, you can move three up to, uh, exactly three away. So this one could go one, two, three, and if this was Jack and he wasn't seen last time, you would have just won. He works exactly opposite of the, the Goodly character from the base game. Now, Madam, she can go up to six, but she can't use the sewers. So if she were Jack and she was in the dark last round, one, two, three, four, five, gone. She can move up to six. Joseph Lane, before after moving one to three, he can place a barrier in between two light gray square the hexes like this, and nobody can see this, and they can't go over it. So even if there was somebody here, this person's still in the dark. So if I move that, for that character I just mentioned, and this player was here, and this was Jack, and I was Jack, and I wanted to escape next round, place this here, he's going to be in the dark next round. See you later. So different ways to escape. The Springtail Man, he can jump. He can do things like one, two, three. We'll jump right over that light, be gone. Or you can go one, two, three. You can jump pretty far away. Also, another interesting sort of rules, if you have an exactly symmetrical space, so there's two empty spaces, then a person, and let's say two more empty spaces, he can jump over these two empty spaces, then over this guy, and then over two empty spaces and end up symmetrical, but there can't be anything else uh, you know, in that round. Or let's say if he was here, again, symmetrical, person symmetrical, he could jump, boom, there for one. So it's a little harder to set up, but it's good to make him jump further at some point. Now, uh, Aberline, let's say I'm him. Let's say uh, I'm going to move him this round. Let's say I'm Jack, he's in the dark, and I can move him and escape next round, but this player is going to be, the inspector is going to be able to move him here and put him in the light. What this player does, he moves one to three, and then everyone that's next to him can only move one. So now let's say it's the inspector's turn. They can only move this guy one, end of the round. I've got him, boom, I'm gone. So it allows you to like stop movements to help you get, keep Jack out of light and keep Jack, you know, close to escapes without anybody else putting light on him. Now let's say you're using Moriarty. This is really cool. At the beginning of the game, the ones that you're not using from the base game and the expansion get put out to the side. Anytime you take Moriarty, you take this question mark and you place it on any one of these characters. Oh, Goodley's not in the game, you wanna use him? Go ahead and use them. But then next time somebody uses him, it's going to get moved and this gets removed. So each of the characters that's not in the game will be able to be possibly used once by the person that uses Moriarty. Brilliant. Yeah, this brings a lot of interesting new characters. Whether you're going to be moving six spaces, the farthest you can move, but you can't move in the sewers. Or you're hindering others' movements, making it so you can stay in the dark and escape better as Jack. Maybe pushing others away from you 
and you can kind of push them away and escape as Jack, kind of like the reverse of Goodly. Maybe jumping over buildings or people, or maybe even being one of the non-selected characters in the game. They did a great job of, of figuring out all sorts of different abilities to use here. Now, obviously, you've got to use the same four main characters are mandatory because it keeps the game working correctly. Otherwise, the game would just be completely broken. But that's good because, you, you know, it's the main part of the game and then you have the other four sort of fringe characters that sort of uh, supplement those, if you will. It definitely makes the game easier to escape as Mr. Jack, uh, which I like because the original one was always misbalanced, 60 to 40. Now, the newer edition of that where they added one sewer and they moved a bunch of sewers made it a lot more 50-50, but this, in my opinion, made it even better. Like, I really like this. It's even more close to... New York, how often you can escape in this. And that's always the most fun way to win the game or lose it tension-wise by an escape. It definitely took the original Mr. Jack to the next level. Out of the four Mr. Jacks, New York, Pocket, Phantom of the Opera, the original Mr. Jack actually was always my least favorite one. And not that I did, didn't like it, it's just I liked all the other ones better because of the reasons I mentioned before. This has taken this up to the next level. In fact, it's just below New York for me right now. And New York is was when I did my top 100 games of all time, number two of all time. I've played it 250 times. Uh, again, this and Pocket are so different because one's like a quick 15 minute game is more like a 30 minute game. But it's really raised the, this uh, for me. I like this a lot more than without the expansion. Uh, I like that you can play the expansion uh, the characters with a new player. So I had a player that had played the familiar with Mr. Jack series, but they had never played the original. And I used the four main characters and four new ones. They don't know the difference. They understand how Mr. Jack works, generally speaking, but I didn't, it wasn't any different to them because they hadn't played the original game. But I was able to play it with new characters that felt new to me. It was gonna feel new to them either way. So you could play this with new players easily. Uh, I like that if you're playing with experienced players, Oh my goodness gracious, the strategy and the depth of the drafting rules of not only drafting which characters are selected, but where they start, anywhere on the board. Oh my gosh, so, so cool. If you're looking for endless amount of replayability. Now it's the difference between like chess and not. Chess has the same starting every time. And that's something that all the Mr. Jack games have, except Fan of the Opera was random. Uh, but now you can have a randomized setup, which if you like that sort of thing, or you didn't like having the same setup every time, this gives that to you. Um, typically, I'm not playing with someone that has enough experience in this that they would be able to like enjoy that part of it. So I typically just take the four new characters, uh, or some of the new characters, and just randomize them as I showed you in the overview. Uh, this one is not, the expansion on the negative side of thing is not necessarily intended either to be played with the New York version. Although I wish there was a way. Has anyone, have you tried to use any of these characters in Mr. Jack in New York, the new ones? Let me know in the comments below. I know that there's certain things like the four main characters you wouldn't want to move in New York, but you also, if you're using the, the met, you know, if you're using the one that flips into the parks, if you don't use them, but you use the one that can place buildings, it might break it a little bit. So there might be some little gotchas there, but I would like to try to mix some of these, like the jumping person into the into New York and stuff. I might try to Frankenstein these together just because I love the game so much, but that's it. This is fantastic. I don't give Saxophone Saturdays for expansions. It's just against my policy. Otherwise, I would have got one. Uh, fantastic. If you like Mr. Jack, this takes it to absolutely the next level. No brainer. That's the Mr. Jack expansion, or it's called extension, actually. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.